Morning team, thank you for joining us. It is Tuesday, November 2nd. I'm Amy Kaur and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck and we're live out of the Goose Island office. But you may notice that our space is a little bit different and we're together. That's right, we decided that we were going to shoot this coffee this morning in the lounge at Goose Island. So grab your coffee, your tea, your power smoothie, lemon water, whatever you've got, and let's jump into the next episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Let's do it. Thank you so much for joining us again this morning. Today, we've got a topic as we roll through business planning. Yesterday, we finished up week four of the perfect business plan. And with that, we talked about a lot. We talked about action, we talked about mindset, we talked about value, and we talked about growth. Today, what we wanna share are some of the things that we saw agents have success with in 2021, and many of them had banner years, and then talk about what we can do going into 2022 to really blow it up again. So let's start with what we saw worked in 2021 with some specific stories and examples. And let's start with you, Anne. Yeah, so the first one that I wanna to touch on is a prospecting presentation. But more specifically, for app properties brokers, it's the digital listing presentation. This year, when we rolled it out, it was a game changer. And we know so many of you are using it right now, but we have real live examples of agents who have decided to reach out to the people in their sphere of influence and introduce the DLP. Not just using it when somebody reaches out to say, hey, listen, I'm thinking about listing, but actually using this amazing tool that you can send out, takes you five to 10 minutes to create a great version of a digital listing presentation and be able to show them what your capabilities are as an agent. So the first one, definitely the DLP and using it as a way to prospect for more business. I love that one, Amy, because we're actually hearing success stories from agents getting referrals directly from sending out that presentation. So the second one I like to call straight up outreach. What does that mean? A lot of times we get roadblocked by different things. What are we going to reach out about? What are we going to do? What are we going to put together? So then we end up doing nothing. So the DLP is a great option, but straight up outreach for number two means you are literally just calling somebody. You are texting somebody. You are reaching out. And we saw a lot of success with this in the past year where whether it was from coffee or from other sessions we were hosting, we asked everybody attending to reach out to one person they knew they needed to. And the success stories started flowing in. We asked agents just to text one person and tell us what happened. And it's amazing from that one text, it was referrals, it was re-fostering relationships that maybe they hadn't been fostering in the past. So straight up outreach. As basic and silly as that may sound, it is one of the most effective things you can do. And we saw that happen in 2021. That's right, Kevin. I mean, I always say just throw something out into the universe because then it's got to do something and come back to you, right? So the third thing that we really saw make a huge impact for so many agents was also kind of basic or something that's been around for a really long time, and that was finding an accountability partner. I know, sounds crazy, right? But honestly, finding at least one other person, we had agents talk about how there was a group of three of them that would get together either by Zoom or uh, in person at the office and once a week would just check in. And it really anchored them and it allowed them to make sure that they didn't lose too much focus. And in 2021, it was definitely a year where lots of stuff was happening. You know, lots of people were really busy, but we had so many people People say that because I was able to connect and check in with a colleague and we could keep each other on track, it made, made a huge difference when I was looking on staying on track for the year. So think about it as you're going into 2022, and I know we mentioned it yesterday, but think about accountability. Is there somebody, a colleague, somebody that I really respect that might also want that same check-in and the ability to share ideas and making sure that I stay on task? All right, that's great. And now I want to transition from what we've seen be successful in 2021. And I want to ask you, Amy, if you were to go back into business and working with clients today, going into 2022, what's the one thing you would be sure to do? You know, the one thing that I think is so critical for every agent to focus on is the CRM. And I know you guys that that is not that exciting. And I know for so many of us, it's always the last thing that we want to do. But the way that I look at the CRM is... If I don't even know who I'm reaching out to, 
does it even matter that I'm reaching out? You know, I think oftentimes we kind of shotgun all of the different things that we want to do from a marketing standpoint or for branding. But I think you've got to figure out who are my point of focus, who are my people. And, you know, what I'm also excited about is the fact that we are introducing move scores, which I know we've, you know, announced or have, have talked about on a, a casual basis, but it, more information is coming in the next couple of weeks. But that's where you can actually have the right information in your database. And if you have their phone number, their email, and most importantly, their mailing address, this technology is going to be able to let you know whether or not they may be moving within the next six to 12 months. And who wouldn't want that? You know, so I also think your database gives you the opportunity to really focus in on the relationships that matter most. And while it's painful to get it organized, I guarantee, and I know this for myself, my CRM is not looking super pretty right now, but if I suddenly had to go back in and really focus on sales, I would want to figure out who are my most important people because the way that I really grew my business was based off of relationship. So CRM, definitely the first and most important thing uh, that I would be looking at if I were getting back into sales. And Kevin? Yeah, I'd agree about with you? you on that one. I just want to echo that. That's a, that's a good one, even though it's daunting, like you said. Yeah to yeah. have to update your database. And, but what I really like about it is that there is something that you can do with your database, mm -hmm. move score coming up, yep. like we were talking about. So mine, if I were to go back into working with clients today and I had to rebuild my business, I think I would do real estate reviews. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason being is, it is an easy way to be able to show your value by using market information that we have readily available and being able to sit down, connect with somebody, work on the relationship, spend a couple of moments showing what's going on in their community, and then ask some very important questions. And it was just a few weeks ago, we did the coffee, uh, on coffee we talked about real estate reviews and keeping it simple. So I would do that because it would be an easy way to reconnect with everyone in my database that maybe I hadn't been in touch with recently because we're not working together. Yeah, and I love that. I think especially now this year, real estate reviews, because real estate is a really interesting thing that people are very curious about, right? I mean, they're hearing in the news, appreciation, you know, rates, real estate um, or interest rates at, you know, all time low, just a lot of different opportunities. And so I think a lot of times agents are always afraid to get in front of clients if the news isn't great. But you guys, this is such a great year to really give somebody a snapshot of the success that they've had in 2021. So great point. But back to the CRM, if you don't have a great CRM, then you're not going to know who to send a real estate review to, right? So right. both really important things. And, you know, I think we want you to take the time to think about what in your business do you really need to focus on uh, so that next year is going to be amazing, that it's going to be your best year ever. Um, we're excited to hear from you. So please share, shoot us an email at coffee uh, at properties.com. And I also know that yesterday, as we wrapped up our workshop, we had a lot of um, notes in the, in the chat box and people were asking about our most favorite podcasts or books. So we thought that we would share some of those because one of the things that we do believe in is to continue to focus on growth and development and becoming better at what we do, both personally and and professionally. So Kevin, why don't you share what your favorite podcasts are? Sure. I think, you know, I want to I want to touch on what was said yesterday in the chat where someone asked if we had any favorite real estate related podcasts. I want to make it clear, I think for Amy and I both, our favorite podcasts are not necessarily real estate mm -hmm. related directly. So the challenge is and when listening to podcasts or books is really being able to apply what you're hearing <laughs> to the industry that we're in or the client that we're working with currently or our colleagues that we may be struggling with. So for mine, my favorite, uh, my favorite, I'll do three, if okay. that's okay. I'll do uh, first the School of Greatness with Lewis Howes. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. He's a great interviewer. He has a wide range of different interviewees and guests that he brings on. Uh, so that's a good one. I always get a lot out of it and they're usually longer from an hour to an hour and a half long. And then the second would be Huberman Lab. And Huberman Lab has nothing to do with real estate. It has everything to do with human behavior and understanding the science behind it. Ah. Uh, and then also, you know, self-care too. So when it comes to the benefits of breathing was a great one that I learned uh, quite a bit from. Just in terms of when you wake up, how you breathe, or when you're feeling stressed, how you breathe. And 
I know we, we very rarely feel stressed in real estate, so <laughs> right. that may not be applicable. Um, and then the third is the Gary Vee experience. And that is something that I would caution against listening to with children in the car or sensitive ears. Uh, he's, he doesn't use the cleanest language, but he uses words for impact. But the reason why I think he's so great is he is all about creating exposure and about giving back by creating value in the content that you do create teaching people things. And so he's been talking about social media for a long time and using it effectively and being able to create exposure for his brands. And he's done it. Uh, and it's also just an entertaining podcast to mm -hmm. listen to. So those are my three. I actually think it's nice to get out of real estate sometimes, you know, because I think sometimes we get so stuck in our own industry uh, that when you get experiences or insight from people who are in a different industry, it kind of opens your eyes to, to new things. Um, all right, so mine, and I tend to go on a walk a ton with Staley and Finley, my two little crazy dogs, and I like to listen to podcasts when I do. So one of my favorites, um, and you've probably heard me say this before, but I absolutely love Oprah. I mean, who doesn't? You know, if you've ever listened to <clears throat> her life and how, you know, she had a, a lot of challenges when she first started before she has become this hugely successful entrepreneur and whatnot, right? This phenom. And so she has two. It's, one is Super Soul, uh, which is just a lot of great, super soulful conversations. So many different famous people, but from all walks of life. So I love that. She also has one called Masterclass, kind of weaves in, but also some really amazing people that talk about, you know, their successes in their line of work. So Oprah for me. But what I also actually love, and Kevin is the one who um, got me hooked on this one. It's called Bigger Pockets, and it's about real estate investing because uh, I'm a big believer that not only are we in real estate to serve and help buyers and sellers, but as we learn the craft and we understand the value in, of investing in real estate, I want to learn and grow and figure out how I can do that for myself. So it's a really great podcast, lots of really great ideas for first-time investors and lots of different ways to look at investing. Um, and then I just started listening to another one actually yesterday morning on my way in, in traffic. It was called Real Estate Uncensored. Uh, and I actually learned about it at Inman. And the first episode learned three awesome tips about Instagram that I knew nothing about. So those are mine, um, but I'm constantly looking. So if any of you guys have great podcasts that you've come across, we would love to learn about them or hear about them because I think similar to what we're sharing in, in um, you know, having all of you do is learning how to grow, we want to continue to do, to do the same thing. So those are mine. That's great. Yeah, put them in the comments down below in the video here, and then you'll be able to share with all of our viewers. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And do you guys like our new format? This is kind of interesting, right? Usually we're just yelling at each other through a Zoom screen. So it's kind of weird actually having coffee in person. You know, we tried it in Vegas, and so we thought, let's try it again. <laughs> and hopefully it's working. Hopefully. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, I think the key, if you were on business planning yesterday and the key coming out of this is choose something, do something, take action, right? And as we move forward towards 2022, make sure that you're completing your business plan, but it doesn't go in a drawer. It stands out and it's something that you use going into and through the new year. All right. So thanks team. Make it a great Tuesday. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, stay caffeinated. Yes, you got this.